for life. Okay, the fuck the fuck it button. I'm using that on. Uh, I should. Uh, I'm trying to put a warning on the on the on the captions, not for um, people sensitive to swearing or something. Uh, not for not not for sensitive. Yeah, this is not video. Not for sensitive people. It's about the fuck it button. And the fuck it button. If people don't know what the fuck it button is, <laughs> it's going to be a bad. This is going to, I'm sure I'm going to get this is going to be a famous video anyway. The, fu the, fu the fuck it button for people who don't know what that is 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 dear. Um, it's like when you it's like you're trying to refrain from something you know is not good for you, and then suddenly you say fuck it, I'm going to do it, whatever it is. So it's like I make a commitment not to have sugar anymore, not to have chocolates, or I make a commitment not to take drugs, or I make a commitment not to gamble. Uh, on the lottery tickets, whatever it is, and then you're doing a spiritual work, and then one day it's like, oh, I feel like I'm going to press the fuck it button, and uh, and you want to sort of get that oblivion, a quick uh, state of oblivion. So what I would say with that, you know, and I think actually Hawkins did talk about this. I like I like I like what he said. I'll, 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 I'll use this thing. It's, um, there's a few things, you know, if I was like, I, one of my, my primary addiction is food addiction. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, my primary addiction is food addiction. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so it would be like, I've been, I have been, I've not had, I've not had donuts for 11 years. So for me suddenly to have this thing of like, fuck it, would be like, you know, oh, I want to have donuts now. I want to, essentially, I want to escape from the world by having the thing that I, don't, I know is not good for me. Uh, so I'm going to say, like, okay, the fuck it button. I'm going to press the fuck it button. I don't care if I've not had a donut for 11 years. I'm going to have donuts today and have as many donuts and just gorge myself on donuts until I'm not, not here any longer. So that would be the fuck it button. So that's just explaining what the fuck it button. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. Um, Okay, so there's this thing of what I'd call the spiritual, I'll use the Hawkins, this comes from Hawkins, we call, you can call it the spiritual bank account, the spiritual bank account. You know, and here's the thing for, um, my thing with uh, doing spiritual work, the, you see, the thing is that, you know, where, you know, I would go with Hawkins, I'm just, you know, this is purgatory, this is a very difficult world. This is a world of constant, constant temptation and constant stuff is going to come up. No matter who you are, even if you were Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ had, had uh, quite a few difficult things come up and he was, uh, he was at a very high level. Buddha talked about the demons attacking him. Um, so, and that's for like Buddha and Jesus. So, um, so we're all going to be having temptations and also, you've got to understand that we've had past lifetimes, you know, just if you, if you want to agree, and or you can read, you know, go to a past life hypnotist or uh, do uh, past life regression or muscle testing, or you, anyway, I won't go into that now. So, things can hit you suddenly out of the blue, even if you're in good spiritual condition, is what I'm trying to say. So, you're going, you know, you're doing your Course in Miracles every day, you've been blissed out for the last three weeks and you're doing your lessons every 10 minutes and then it can suddenly come that uh, it's like your karma you're because you, you're at this level you now you know the, you know three you know if you look three lifetimes ago you were Genghis Khan you know and you ordered that the guys to go and just destroy that village you know so that's a lot of heavy karma and it's like now that you got to this level it's now payback time you know, it's like you're, you're in bliss for three weeks, you're doing the Course in Miracles every ten minutes and you're in bliss and you're floating along and miracle after miracle and then suddenly it's like, I don't know, you get beaten up by ten guys randomly on the street for no reason and you go, you know, so that kind of thing can happen uh, and uh, it's not a nice video, is it? So, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing can happen and you go, <laughs> that's not good. That's not a big, good video. Well, it's not a good video if you're wanting a good time. Anyway, so, so, but also, um, 
So you don't know when stuff's going to come. So you want to be in your best possible place. And sometimes, you know, if you're doing a spiritual work, it is offsetting your, your lifetimes of negative karma. So if you're doing a spiritual work, you know, it's like, oh, you're doing a Course in Miracles, you're, you're forgiving your neighbor who's just, I don't know what they've done. Anyway, they've done something. Forgiving your neighbor, and because you've forgiven them, that means you've just erased, you know, one of your lifetimes of karma. So now if you go like, I've had three weeks of bliss, I'm going to stop doing my Course in Miracles, I'm going to stop the intensity of my spiritual work, you know, then what happens is you might not clear that karma, or when it comes, you won't have enough of a spiritual connection to weather it. And the thing is, you don't know when these, even if you're a good spiritual student, you don't know when something's going to come out of the blue. You know, you, don't, you just don't know. These things can come out of the blue. So, even if you think, well, I've, I've been doing my Course in Miracles religiously for the last two weeks, and, uh, and, then, uh, uh, and then I decided to take a break because it's been two weeks, and then something hit me. You know, something hit me hard. So I always feel like if I'm really intense with my spiritual practice, which I usually am, and I still am at the moment, you know, doing the Course in Miracles, doing the Observer, doing the Field of Feelings, you know, in fact, my whole life, I would just say, you know, and it's, I know, because I've had, you know, I did go to a muscle tester and they said I had 15 lifetimes. 15 lifetimes, 15 lifetimes. So I want to be in a place where I'm sort of, Doing, trying to be in the observer, trying to be in the now, trying to let go of every thought, trying to forgive every person, and ramping up my spiritual activity. Because, you, you know, A, if I'm doing all this spiritual work, you know, I'm clearing stuff that I won't have to face. And by doing this spiritual work, when the stuff hits me, you know, stuff will sometimes hit me, and there'll be a saint at the same time. I know people who do spiritual work will do that. It's like, oh my God, this thing's happened, and yet an angel comes out of the middle of nowhere and tells you what you need to do to, to get through that. You know, everyone's, had, everyone's done the Course of Miracles. It's like, oh, it's like something bad's happening, but there's an angel there to get you, get, get you you're out of, get out of jail card. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. If you're not doing any spiritual work and the, the shit hits the fan, you know, you don't have an angel or you don't have a miracle to get you out of jail card uh, when that happens. And so, one of the ways of undoing karma is to go through it raw without any help, you know, and that's the thing I, w I wouldn't want to do. So it's like, you know, the more I can, you know, for me just to be in the observer, just to have the highest level of consciousness is a blessing. It's a blessing that light goes out and it's also offsetting my karma or if I still have to face my karma, there's usually an angel or a thing. And I've had so many times. I remember once, in the early days, I was having one of my tr operations to do with my transplant. And uh, this is true, you know. And I was doing 12-step work. I was trying to do a service to these people in my 12-step group. You know, I was trying to be helpful. I knew that would offset my karma, karmic load. And I remember, so that this, you know, anyone who knows cannulas, you know, when they come with the little thing and they just stick it up a, up a vein, and some of them are like magic, and some of them don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I don't know if people know it. So they grab this needle and they go, oh, we need a vein. And they just mm -hmm. stick it in. And, and you don't know, is this going to be a person who knows what they're doing? <laughs> or is this going to be a person where it's like, oh my God, she, this, she has no idea what she's doing. This is excruciating, you know. And uh, so I had this nurse come in. She was one of the ones that doesn't know what she's doing. And he was like, just he plunged it in. It was, I felt it all the way go in, and it was like in absolute agony. And uh, and uh, and then I was feeling this horrific pain. And this is true, uh, as I remember it. Yeah, I had someone in the fellowship who had a really good spiritual connection, and they just sent me this text. And I saw the phone go in the text, and she just was wishing me well. And at that moment that I got the text through, the pain stopped and disappeared and didn't come back. And it was, that was the loving thought, mm -hmm. that was that loving intention of this person who had a great spiritual connection. It just came through when I needed it, mm -hmm. you know. So this thing of like, um, and I knew that was an act of, of grace, that was an act of one thought from someone at a high level of consciousness. They just send a thought your way mm -hmm. and it can take you out of agony, mm -hmm. 
you know, that's the power of people at high levels of consciousness. But let's say I decided to be a total twat this lifetime, and I just had my karma to, to undo, then, you know, I'd probably had that horrific pain for a long time, and no text. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so the thing is, um, when, when you're getting, it, also if you get the fuck it button, it means I would really, it means you're in danger. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong, sometimes karma hits you. But, whatever happens, you know, there's one, one thing is spiritual connection, spiritual work, you know, to, to do it. And if you're struggling, like I've struggled with physical illnesses, and then I knew that, you know, to, to get a miracle around illnesses, you've got to do a lot of work for a while. And so I was willing to do that, you know, I was willing to do that. And the miracles happened around my health. So, um, when I say, when I meet people and they say they're getting shaky or they're getting feelings of the fuck it button, then it's like you need more spiritual connection. And even if you're doing more, you see, all of life for me is orchestrated from my level of consciousness. Yeah. So, if I'm getting the fuck it button, which means, basically, if I press the fuck it button, let, let's say I'm at this level of consciousness, and then the temptation to press the fuck it button comes, and if I don't up my spiritual work, it can be anything, course of miracles, the observer, feel the feelings, course lessons, and it comes again, and I press the fuck it button, I, I eat those donuts, I eat those bag of donuts, for me. Um, basically, whenever you say yes to something which is a real ego win, I don't know if that makes sense, it's a thing that you know spiritually not good for you, but whenever you say yes to that and you act out on that, your level of consciousness goes rocketing down. Yeah? Because you're there and you get the thoughts, but you don't act out. But as soon as you act out, like let's say, if you don't act out, you keep your level of consciousness and you carry on with your Course of Miracles. As soon as you, because you've said yes to your ego rather than yes to God, you said actually you abandon God's presence. It's like you get you say to God basically if you if you could, were speaking to God you say like you basically say I no longer need your help and grace. I'm choosing donuts as my salvation. So no thank you God. Donuts is my God. I go to God for the salvation of my soul. So you press that, and then you lose you lose all that spiritual work in a split second and you go down to that level of consciousness. And you find that donuts aren't a very good, aren't, aren't really, they don't perform as you expected to. So, um, so for me it's like, because uh, my life did depend on it, you know, I had kidney failure and then you died of this stuff, real thing. So it's like my connection, my connection, anything that some things, you know, you have a thought and you let it go, that's okay. You have a thought and you've been avoiding donut bags for 11 years and you eat like 20 bags of donuts in one go after not having them for, for 20, you know, 11 years. You know, that would be like a severe, a severe drop down and it will take you quite a while to get back up. And you've not got the grace. You haven't got grace, you know. Also, this thing, and I think people have done spiritual work, I'll end with this. You know like when you're spiritually connected, like miracles are happening left, right and centre? You meet the right people, money comes in unexpectedly, uh, someone gives you an opportunity, things seem manageable, days go by and they flow and it's effortless and it's timeless. As soon as you press the fuck it button, you know, that's completely gone in a split second. You know, and there's different levels of consciousness, but it's like, for you to get back up into the, into the timeless now, it's going to take you a while. Because you've gone from there down there. So taking a thought out is one thing, but doing that, you know, this, you know, I've had this thing, I had, I'll share it in the, in the group. I was, I was in, I was having lots and lots of miracles and I hadn't seen a horror film for a very long time. You know, I hadn't seen a horror film because I know that, you know, you know, like if you're going to watch, uh, if you're going to listen to Packer Bell's Cannon or Hawkins, that's way up there. Uh, but if you're going to watch a horror film, you know, and I was used to like lots and lots of miracles happening throughout the day, and then my ego goes like, go on, go watch this horror film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just put it on. And it was like having a blissful day. So what, just, before we, <laughs> just, before I went, just before I went to bed, so there was all this murder and blood everywhere for a couple of hours. 
<laughs> and you're you know, probably, you know. So the ego really was like, it got into that, you know, hypnosis of the film. I really got involved in that film. There's lots of drama and lots of horrible stuff. It's a horror movie. And I, and I went to bed, and the next day, everything went wrong. It's like, you know, the buses weren't arriving in time, people were grumpy towards me, I was feeling grumpy towards people. And I'd been feeling in this state of like connected miracles for a long period of time. And it was such a shock, you know, and I say this, um, if you've been in a state of unending miracles for a period of time and you lose that, you know, if you're in a bad place and you still stay in a bad place, you don't notice it. It's like, I feel crap, I had a bag of donuts, I still feel crap. But if you've had a period where you're in a really high state, you know, where miracles are happening and you're in the timeless now, and then you suddenly do something, like for me it was watch a horror movie, then you, you go from there down there, and it's like the contrast is so... And that, since that time I've not watched a horror movie. You know, and even if I get the glimpse of a thought, like watch a horror movie, which can happen, it's like I remember that day, the drop. I remember the drop was so horrific. You know, and I'm not saying that other people can't get away with enjoying horror movies. Maybe that sounds wrong. I think there was a time where I could watch horror movies and eat donuts every day, and I wouldn't notice anything. But now, if I, if I personally watch a horror movie, I'm not saying don't watch horror movies. I'm not telling telling anyone to do. But I just noticed on the next day what it was like. Is what I'm saying. What that was was a thing of like I'm not recommending mm. the fuck it button. That's basically it. Was, it was, it was video. Um, don't recommend it, but if you want to, you can get your own experience.